We have all heard at least one heat pump horror story by now. What if I showed you a different story? A story in which a heat pump works perfectly providing clean and efficient heating for your home. I'm going to show you a full process of an air source heat pump installation. By the end of this video you will be able to understand why some of air source heat pumps do not work correctly. So today we're starting another heat pump install and this time we're doing it with HeatGeek and it's already getting so much better than the last one because the equipment was here at 9 o'clock and we are ready to go from day one. We're putting a 17 kilowatt Grand Arona heat pump. It will go in this location here and we're gonna connect our primaries through the cellar. That's where the cylinder will go. So there's plenty of space there. You won't be able to stand up there but uh, it should be relatively easy to run the pipe work and insulate it and run the wiring. I've positioned my cylinder and I'm gonna connect cylinder today so they can have hot water from the immersion heater so we can remove the boiler. I was showing Peter how to mark the pipe work accurately so you can save on your fittings so no elbows used on that. One, two, three, four bands. If you ever wondered if a retrofit heat pump on your own is feasible in my opinion oh, it's absolutely not because just so much so much pipe work to run you need two usually two people so peter is in the cellar now we've got our primaries and flow in return for central heating and hot water taken out and it's just not the kind of work you can do on your own someone has to be passing the pipes through someone has to be really helping you and in here I'm waiting for anti-freeze valves, so I cannot finish my primary power pipe work to the heat pump. That's gonna be connected on those flexible hoses. Now, I'm gonna put anti-freeze valve on this one right here, because that's the lowest point. Second anti-freeze valve will go on the pipe work here. And we'll put this really nice uh, external insulation from... What are they called? Condense Pro? Con I don't remember what they called. I think they were starting with doing uh, insulation for boiler condensate and they stuck to the name Condense Pro, I think it's called. It looks nice. It's a good insulation, I think. This installation we're doing with uh, HeatGeek under the HeatGeek Heat Pump Assured installation. If you want to learn more about that uh, scheme, there'll be a link to HeatGeek's video right here. So what's different between installing a heat pump under HeatGeek scheme and uh, some bigger companies out there the main difference is we do take care about the system design we start with the proper heat loss calculations proper pipe work sizing and sizing of heat emitters we've calculated every single room to a specific uh, temperature we're not zoning the system at all even existing underfloor heating 20 square meters in the kitchen will not be zoned and controlled by a different thermostat because that way we can use the full volume of the system uh, for the heat pump. We're not putting buffers on the system because there's always a chance of losing efficiency if you install a buffer. So instead of that, we're just using a small volumizer on the system. Oh my God. It started. Everyone's <laughs> really excited. Is it noisy? You can hardly, hardly barely hear it. So uh, it's not too bad right now. In here we've got our uh, flow and return going to the first floor, upgraded to 28 millimeters. Then we've got pipe work running from the heat pump itself back to the cellar. Uh, that's uh, primary pipe work flow and return. Then we've got flow and return going for central heating. Then we've got new 22 millimeter copper pipe work supplying hot water back to the kitchen. And then yet again another 22 millimeter pipe work running from the invented cylinder temperature and pressure relief valve going through a high temperature pump back to the outside and here we've got new jewel unvented cylinder high gain cylinder with a coil of size of almost three square meters then we've got a uh, new balanced cold going to the property and new cold supply uh, new main supply in 22 mil copper as well and this is an interesting item which is a high temperature pump to pump away our system pressure relief and cylinder temperature and pressure relief and this is the only pump that I'm aware of that can continuously pump water close to 100 degrees C. It's quite expensive, it's about 700 pounds but I'm not aware of any equivalent or a cheaper equivalent 
to this pump. So if you know of a better solution or a cheaper solution, comment below, let me know, because I would be curious to know if there is actually anything that can do what this little pump does. Moving on here, we've got primary flow, bypass, diverter valve. This diverter valve is a, just a three wire diverter valve. When it's energized, it opens to the cylinder. When it's not energized, it's uh, closing the cylinder off. Primary flow, central heating flow, central heating return right here, central heating return right here, cylinder return, and uh, bypass. So we've got our three T's. Bypass is the first T, then we've got cylinder T, then we've got both ground floor and top two floors return for the common return right here. And if we follow that common return, it goes to the filter and then to a low loss header that we are using as a volumizer. We don't have a low loss header on this system and that way we don't have to use a secondary central heating pump and we are avoiding any potential distortion on a low loss header and we are avoiding any potential loss of efficiency. On the cylinder we also have this little gate valve that links flow and return. This is in case the flow through the cylinder from the heat pump is so big that it causes a cylinder coil resonance. So you then you balance the cylinder coil by slightly opening that uh, gate valve and allowing a little bit less flow to go through the coil. At the moment, we don't have any noise problems, so that gate valve is fully shut. And moving on, we've got existing manifold for underfloor heating for the kitchen that does around 20 square meters. What I've done, I've removed the circulating pump for that manifold and I've removed thermostatic controls because the heat pump setup we're installing is low temperature anyway. And the pump on the unit is fully capable of supplying underfloor heating and radiators, overcome the pressure loss of the system. So we don't have to use a circulator for the manifold. And behind this door is all the pipe work that we had to run that's yet to be insulated as well. I'm sure Peter will have fun crawling back there and insulating it all. I'm not going there myself. No way. By the end of the project, we had a visit from the man himself. Adam Chapman from Heat Geek. There was a bit of banter. He lives in there. <laughs> you tidy, you haven't tidied your room. <laughs> Stay in there. Considering that pipe that's never going to be seen, that's very neat. Little chat about heat pump efficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One less pump, less valves, less gubbins to install. Easier for people to understand if they ever want to replace it or work on it. We also had a good chat about a certain Roger. So I've invited him loads of times and um, he, he always says to me, I've invited you to chat this out with me and you still haven't responded. And every time I post underneath, yes I have, email me at this email address. And I've sent him a load of emails and uh, he's not... So hold on, you've sent, you've sent he emails... He pretends to invite me and then ignores my response saying yes. Roger does. Yeah, two or three times he's done it now. Okay. Really irritating. What's going on Roger? You're chickening out from the debate, right? Fuck off! It was all good fun with Adam and I'm gonna post a link to his channel, Heat Geek, right here on this video. And now we have to do another very important part of the job, which is upgrade the radiators. And we've got those monstrous huge rats to put in. And we've got 12, 12 radiators to replace and some radiators to add to the existing ones as well. So now we've changed all the radiators at the property because the system will be running at lower flow temperature and the radiators average radiator temperature which we call mean water temperature will also be much lower so to give you an idea if you've got a condensing boiler your flow might be 70 return 50 and average temperature 60 it's usually probably higher but 60 is in most cases enough here we'll have the maximum flow temperature slightly below 50. We designed it for 50 degrees but I think we can run it at around 48. We're gonna run the system at delta T5 and therefore the radiators will heat up to around 45, 46 degrees. So mean water temperature of radiators is going to be uh, 46 degrees Celsius. What it means is, is that you need to calculate the heat loss on a room by room basis. This room, if you look around, it's a music room, has a quite a large heat loss of 1.7 kilowatt. What it means is that I had to put two very large vertical radiators those are 600 by 1800 uh, they're really heavy they are well over 60 kilograms so there's no chance that you can install one of those on your own you really need someone strong to give you a hand installing them now those radiators 
when they are rated for our heat pump at 46 min water temperature, they're gonna supply us around 850 watts each. So from those two radiators, we're gonna get exactly 1700 watts and that will satisfy the heat loss of this room. So, although they just warmish to touch, they about, you know, 40 degrees right now, or even less because you're running on weather comp, so they don't have to work at the highest uh, design temperature yet because it's around six degrees outside. Dang, it's quite, it's really warm here. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm in a t-shirt. Uh, because although they only heat up to right now below 40 degrees, they heat the room up to 21 degrees because they still supply enough energy into the room to heat it up to our design temperature. So if you hear that heat pumps don't work and the rooms are cold, well, they will be if the system is not designed correctly. If you don't do the proper heat loss calculations and if you don't size your emitters correctly, yes, you'll run into trouble. Now I'm gonna balance the system and I've got those really interesting IMI radiator valves that allow me to adjust the flow through the radiators very accurately to around 10 liters per hour. So now I have to set the flow on my underfloor heating. So right now I'm getting Delta 3, so I have to turn the flow restrictor slightly down to force it to around Delta 5. This is a really old manifold. I don't want to break it. Those are so stiff. This is a really important part of commissioning that you're getting around Delta 5 on your underfloor heating and on your radiators. By now you should start to appreciate the multi-stage process of a heat pump installation. We always start with a site survey and room by room heat loss calculations, followed by a system design and heat pump and emitter sizing. You may have to upgrade some of your pipe work and also you may have to upgrade your existing electrical supply. More often than not, some of the existing radiators will have to be upgraded as well to allow for the system to operate correctly at lower temperatures. The whole process needs to be done carefully from start to finish. Fail at any of those steps and you will get the answer to the question of why heat pumps don't work. Who knows, you may even become famous when this guy does a video about your heat pump installation. Hopefully it doesn't come to that.